Dave Spooner, and I'm with the Woodland Woodcarvers uh, for Whittling Time on WKTV. And this presentation, uh, we're going to go through and show how to do a eagle cane handle. And um, the first, the first, and I'm going through three different phases, excuse me, six different phases of the procedure. So the first, the first part is to take a block of wood, um, approximately, it could be anywhere between an inch and three quarter, two inches, and um, oh, about nine inches long, five inches deep, and I'm going to show two means of connection when it comes down to attaching the cane shaft to the carving of self. And um, there's many more other ways. Now, also, sometimes you can't always find that thickness of wood. So in many cases, I'll laminate two pieces together, whether it's walnut or any other kind of species, something that would be uh, acceptable for your carving at the time. And I'm going to do uh, two different colors of wood. And to start out with, I'm taking the, uh, the lighter color to show more of the detail as I go on. Uh, like I said, there's, there's two means of connection that I'm sh demonstrating on this one. Uh, one is uh, where I can take and drill a inch and three quarter hole here, about three quarters of an inch deep, uh, and then I'll take a three quarters inch twist drill and drill down, in this case, maybe about three inches. Because my goal is, is to get it past this cross grain so it strengthens the handle, so you don't break it at the, at the grain line. So this one uh, uh, is one means of connection, and I've got an arbor, lathe arbor, that I made for this, uh, for the sake of guiding and that. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll scribe a circle around here, so uh, when we get to the next phase, you'll understand why that is. Now on the, um, the second version would be I use a threaded rod on this one. So in order to cut this one, I'll use, in this case, I had to use an adjustable hole saw. And the reason why I did is I'm using this uh, inch and three sixteenths collar. Uh, once in a while, you'll do a carving that'll take a one inch collar. So with this, I'll go down, again, about three quarters of an inch, and I'll cut that. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a tenon for that. And then also, I'll re-drill um, this to uh, with a 5 16 drill, and I'll run a 3 8 tap down here. Now, you could use any thread. You could use quarter inch or whatever. I, I like to use a 3 8 threaded rod. For me, it, it works good in that. Um, I recommend doing all your drilling and as much as you can in the block form before you cut it. Uh, and that helps you keep everything stable and square, because once you start cutting away and you want to start drilling your drilling, it's very difficult to get everything square and plumb. So when we go to the next phase, uh, the next phase would be, uh, in this case, I started with a pattern on the one side. 
Uh, I like to end up with a pattern on both sides, but when it's in the block form like this, you can't quite get both sides lined up the same. So what I do is I take and uh, cut the basic form out here and then do a reverse pattern and glue it on there. And again, uh, once I glue that, it gives me my guidelines on both sides of the piece right there. And I also, once I get this, this uh, point done, I actually drill a little hole where the pupil of the eye is on both sides. And the reason why I do that, it keeps me where I don't lose those eyes position because too many times you'll do, you'll do a carving and then you'll lose your, your position on the other side and then it looks like a cross-sided piece. And that doesn't look very good. So also what I'll do when it's in this form, uh, in this particular case, I've got this detail right here. And before I cut the other, other areas away, before I start carving, um, I, uh, yeah, before I start carving, I can start uh, putting my guidelines on. So when I put my guidelines on, um, I'm showing where I'm going to do my cuts and do my carving. So my next phase in this area is, you can see where I've got this area. Um, normally, at this time, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll run a threaded rod in here and I'll, and I'll uh, turn it off, turn it up over on the lathe and cut this area away uh, along both pieces. So in this piece, I've created an arbor, an arbor to turn this so I can turn this area down round. And for me, to do it on the lathe, it ke keeps everything pretty much balanced and it helps me keep that center line. Now you can always also cut this by hand with a knife and, and carve it out there. I did most of this carving, uh, this handle, with a, with a carving knife. Eh, maybe a chisel here and there, or a little power tool, but most of it was done with, uh, with knife and that. So in the next phase right here, I'll, I'll cut this. Not only will I turn it off on the lathe, um, I'll start cutting away these areas that I've got marked off and that. Uh, and then you'll start seeing uh, things start to shape up. So once I get this all cut away, I'm at this stage. And you can see, I'll, once I got that cut away, I'll mark off some more areas that need to be removed. And the one thing is, is when you cut this this portion of the carving away, you lose those lines. So uh, once you lose those lines, what I do is I keep the old pieces and uh, I use those old pieces to, trans to transition those lines back on the carving. Now you can see also where I've cut this part out when it was in the flat. And um, I used a scroll saw to do that. And you could use a hand coping saw if, if, if that, where you can drill a small hole in there 
and uh, go back and do that. Um, now, if you don't have these pieces, or you, you can always transfer those lines by either a compass, a pair of dividers, I should say, and a pair of calipers where you can transfer those lines. And that's another reason why I, I drilled the hole for, for the eyes. It helps you transition those other guidelines in place there. So uh, uh, the, the goal is right now, at this phase, is to carve away the areas that I've got marked, you know. And I have a variety of knives. I usually kind of lead to one. But when you get into, I start out with where I've got that curve at the back. I just use that as a stop cut right there and then carve down to it. Because you've always got this grain that changes and it turns on you on all that. And a lot of times what I'll do in, in hardwood is I'll use, I'll use this uh, like a thumb on the other hand and I'll use it to leverage that. And uh, of course it's just like anything, your, your, your tools need to be sharp. Uh, and any of you watch the way your grain runs, you know, because you don't want to go against your grain. And with a, with a curve like this, uh, it's changing, you know. So when you, go, when you go downhill to downhill, you know, so when it comes down to the handle part, in this case, uh, you're going to carve away this area right here. And and each side, and what that'll that'll help round your round your handle up. Um, and also another thing that you need to do is um, round this area. So how this is cut away, um, it helps you uh, cut down to one of those points. And the reason why that tendon is there is to fit that collar in that. And uh, that'll help strengthen your connection between your, your cane and your handle. That's another means. Uh, so it's a matter of keep working working this down. Now sometimes it might make it easier um, to use a chisel or power in these areas because you got a lot of material to move, you know, in each in each area. And that. So you'll see here that I've got a center line and usually what I like to do is, is also put a center line there and it helps provide a high spot for your carving. So you want to you wanna carve from your high spot to your low spot. Keep that, keep that curvature going and it'll blend, in, blend your carving in better or easier than that. Uh, so we want to do, we want to do that um, to round this section over here. And at this point, it's going to be pretty rough because later you'll have an opportunity to, to, um, to fine tune some of those cuts and that. Um, you're also, once you get these areas of cuts removed, um, 
you can come back up to this area in the beak. Uh, so it's a matter of, you can see here where I've got this center line all the way down to the piece and down through the bottom side and around. And again, it's to try to keep, you want to keep it concentric all the way around the carving and that. So I'll taper this back, the beak, but what I want to do too is I keep this as th uh, thick without looking too goofy, but the reason why I like to keep that thick is uh, people have a tendency to drop their canes and, and I found that that might minimize the damage. It's not going to totally guarantee you that it's not going to break, uh, but it, at least it'll help help the cause there and that. And what, what I uh, also want to share is these witness lines right here, uh, what I do is keep uh, as you carve them away, just keep replacing those as you, as you carve them away. Uh, that kind of helps you stay, stay uh, put your carving back uh, to the proper position and all that. So you can see as time, the more you remove, uh, it's starting to come closer into shape. It's a matter of going back over it certain places over and over again to kind of fine tune everything and that. And it's also a matter of keeping your tools sharp. So what I'll do sometimes is I hate to stop and sharpen the tools all the time. So I might have three or four of knives or chisels uh, at the ready so I don't have to keep stopping every time. And then I'll sharpen them all at the same time. With walnut, uh, sometimes it's easier to see if you've got a white marker or a white pencil uh, so you can see so you can see the the guidelines more. Uh, in this case, for uh, demonstration purposes, I'll put like a white background on there so you could see it along with the black uh, to hope it shows up here. And again, with an eagle, you've got so many um, variations and interpretations uh, with an eagle. Um, I think it's a matter you can take artistic license with it, you know. Uh, whatever feels good for you and um, what works for you. You might have different te techniques than the next guy. It doesn't necessarily make it wrong. Um, it's just that some pieces may come up better than others and uh, fit the needs better for who's ever using it. And again, if you could see how I, I'm holding my thumb along with the knife itself with the other one, um, it's almost acting like a wood plane. How you know you have a wood plane in a, in a fixture to hold the blade, uh, you're kind of doing that same thing in a way, but you're holding it steady with your other, with the other finger. And you can take as, as, much as, you, as much as you want, or as less as you want. You can see it kind of peel off easy. Uh, and that, so uh, we're down to the point right here in this stage of the game to uh, kind of rough things out enough where you can see things finally starting to come to shape. See, I'm car I carved away that one guideline, so I'm just recreating it again and then carving back up to it. When you, when you put that line back uh, right away, uh, then you don't have to fight yourself to try to recreate it or where, where did I put it, you know? And basically the reason why you want to just keep shifting sides 
so you don't get too much off balance. And then one thing we, we want to be conscious of too is this transition here where it goes into the handle. Now, if you had a means to hold it, like if you had a nice uh, vise, woodworker's vise, where you got flat, plain jaws, uh, you could always put this in the vise and then take your chisel, your, your wood carving chisels, and then start rounding it off and use that center line to be able to pair it back on both sides. Uh, so if you keep rotating it, work it down, uh, and then taper it from here to there, and just kind of work yourself around, um, it'll really start coming to life for you. Um, once this is all removed and that, then you're, you're, we're, we're going to go into the other phase, which is right here. And we've removed a lot of the basics. And um, we're down to where you want to work on the eyes and, and that location along with uh, refining this area because it's it like I said we're still at a rough stage and I've taken a center line again right through the center of this handle on both sides to try to keep it symmetrical and then there's a fine line through the center that I've got and in this case I laminated two pieces of walnut together so I've got a fine line right there where I could see with my seam. So um, with this, it's a matter of, of keeping and, and refining your cuts. And again, you'll see here, we want to keep those, these guidelines still alive. One thing we're going to concentrate now is this area around the eye. Um, the, the goal here now is to carve out this area where the eyes are going to sit. And what I like is, is a knife here with a curvature in there. So when you get into those areas, you can do a little, little divot and kind of carve that in there a little bit to carve it away. The goal here is to taper this down where we're, we're taking this carving and we're, we're creating a divot within this area uh, and going forward. Uh, once you get all this smoothed out and it fine-tuned, uh, you'll come to this point. And uh, you can see I, I left a little bit of mound right here to show you that if you wanted to carve the eyes, you still have that opportunity. It depends on how big or small uh, you drill your hole for that pupil. You know, the smaller the hole you drill, the easier it is to do the carving from your eye. If you get it a little bit too big, you have a tendency to crush that wood around it, and it it makes it a lot more difficult to put that eye in in that. So uh, right here, it's, it's a matter of doing a lot of sanding. Uh, well, a little sanding depending on how, how you can clean up your, your carving with your knife or your chisel or anything else in that, and you've established those parts right there. Now, once you get it to this point, uh, you can either you can either varnish it over that, put a clear coat, and if you're satisfied with with uh, it at this point, that's okay too. Uh, I decided to take this a little further and do some wood burning on some feathers at, at one portion, and um, maybe a little color. Um, in, in the head itself, of course, bald eagle, they're, they're white. Um, so I've, uh, I've taken the opportunity to do that. 
So I used a lot of wood burning on that. Uh, but I start laying out my, my, my lines where I use my center line again. And then I start outlining my feathers. I start like that. And then, of course, then I'll, I'll wood burn the, the lines in there for the feathers. Um, they're not perfect, but they're just enough to show um, the detail in the feathers, just to kind of show you. Uh, it makes for a little bit more pleasing uh, line there. So the, 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 last, the last phase... Uh, I've went through. This is where I've I've done the wood burning. I put a little color with with the white, and I take a like a white acrylic paint, and I water it down like a wash, um, where it kind of soaks in there. And I'm usually I water it down quite a bit so I don't get that paint look like it's painted. It looks like it could still be a little translucent where you still show some white, but you can still see a little bit of the wood burning. And I did the same thing with the beak with the yellow in that. Uh, so you can see in this point where I've put the 3 8 uh, rod in there for a connection between that and the cane. Uh, and there's your there's your uh, collar there. And then uh, with the other type connection, with this one, um, I've turned the cane down on a lathe. And this was actually a baseball bat in its prior life. Uh, and I like the baseball bats. Um, if you can find them, because the wooden ones are rare to find right now, uh, but I, I usually look at Goodwill or your thrift stores or something like that where you can pick them up. And uh, you can see uh, you've got that joint that we, we drilled out, and it'll fit on there like that. The reason I ch ch chose this particular connection with this wood, this is a softer wood, and this gives you the opportunity as more glue points. And with this rod uh, that's up past your grain line, it gives this handle a lot more stability uh, throughout slice. So it's, it, it makes for a good, stable connection. Now, uh, this one right here, um, this I made out of an old uh, stair, stairway spindle in that, and I returned it on the lathe. Now, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a lathe to work with, uh, you can always take uh, and make a shaft out of, well, a lot of different things. You can use a... a a draw knife, a spoke shave, um, and that. Now, sometimes I've also taken, depending on the size of the, uh, depending on the size of the of the handle, I've even taken old uh, cue sticks and and uh, turned those back down and uh, use those for for cane shafts, you know, but. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can use that may be repurposed or, uh, or not, you know. Um, so it goes pretty well in that. And if you can see how that turns out to be a finished product. And that's so, and again, there's, there's different uh, different variations. You can variate your pattern. You can create your own pattern in that. Um, and well, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.